Your words shape your reality. Use better words, and guess what you'll have? A better reality. So Healing Vortex. Um, healing is a fascinating thing, because when I first became a therapist, I really had no idea that I could actually do healing, but people would come and say to me, oh my God, you did something amazing. And when I was in Barcelona two years ago, there was a really nice girl here who'd actually got hit. She, her hand got hit by a car. And I was in the middle of a workshop and she called, she goes, my hand's just been hit by a car. I'm in a really bad way. So I went to meet her. I said, you've got to go to hospital. She went, no, no, no. I, I know you can fix me. And I was looking at her and she had the look in her eyes of like what I call a terrified pony look. And so I was talking to her, and then she said, oh, it's already happening, you know. Every time you nudge me, you're obviously doing the healing, and I, I really wasn't, but she clearly thought I was, so I just carried on and said, okay, I'm commanding your left hand, which is hurt, to become exactly like your right hand. And so I did a little bit of command therapy, a bit of healing vortex, and she said, I feel so much better. It doesn't even hurt. I feel great. And the next day, she did go to have an x-ray, and they said, well... It's amazing your hand's been hit by a car because there's practically no damage, there's no inflammation, tiny bit of bruising, and it's all fine. And when I very, very first became a therapist, this gentleman came to see me. I never forgot him. He was quite titled. And he came in for being an alcoholic, and he sat in front of me. And I started to talk. He went, my dear, I can't speak. This is so powerful what you're doing that I'm unable to speak. And he put his head on my desk, and he thought he was in deep hypnosis. He really wasn't. I thought, well, you know, he thinks he's in deep hypnosis. He believes he's catatonic. So I continued the session and said, drinking no longer interest. You know the opposite of love is not hate. It's indifference. From this moment on, you are indifferent to alcohol, disinterested. Now, and guess what? You love not drinking. You love it so much. You tell everyone. And I kind of carried on with his spiel. And at the end, he opened his eyes and went, that, that was marvelous. And I know it worked because he must have sent me hundreds of people who said, well, you looked at him and he went so deep into a trance. You did something very odd to his mind. And he's never had a drop of alcohol since. But, you know, I really didn't do it. He did it. He came in with a belief, you're going to look at me and do some stuff and you're going to fix me. And really, that's what healing is. This is not to denigrate religion at all. But when the preacher says, I put my hand on your head and the Holy Spirit is healing you, it's your belief that's healing you. When you go to countries like Lourdes, where people say, you know, the energy and the water and the holy water healed me, well, that's both true and not true. Your belief system can heal you. It can also make you very sick. If you say, you know, I always get sinus headaches in the winter. I always get headaches when it's cold. I get my tension headaches every Monday. The amount of people I work with who get sick on a Monday and better on a Friday is not that surprising because they hate their job. So healing is self-healing. And I've been studying the mind for 33 years, studying something called neuroplasticity, which is the mind's ability to change, and, and eminent doctors and scientists now say, you know, the mind isn't static. It's very plastic. We can look inside the mind and see that thoughts change neurons. Good thoughts make good neurons. Bad thoughts make bad neurons. So your mind is extremely gifted at talking to your body. It does it every day. I ate that cake, I know I'm going to get fat. You know, I knew it. Look, I've gained a pound. I knew if I looked at a cake, I would get fat. Well, actually, weirdly enough, if you look at a cake or a pizza or a hot dog saying, that will make me fat, I can get fat just inhaling food. That belief creates so much tension, so much cortisol, and cortisol's job is to pack on weight. If you look at food and go, you know what, whatever I eat, my metabolic rate burns it off. I prefer to eat healthy food. That's my choice. But you know what? A little bit of something every now and again. My body knows how to burn that off. And again, you know, my clients have taught me everything. You know, I didn't learn what I'm going to do with you today from a book or even from my own very eminent teachers. I learned it from my clients. Many, many years ago, I was out with my best friend and my daughter and her husband, who's terribly posh. And we all had mushrooms, and we all got sick, except me, he said, I never get sick. My body simply would not dare to reject any food I choose, but it wouldn't dare, wouldn't dare to do that. I thought, well, I'm going to have that belief too. 
My body would not dare to reject any food I put in it. My body would not dare to do anything except take the food I put in and combine it with light and build a perfect body for me. So you always have a choice. Your mind talks to your body all the time. That's its job. And your job is to tell your mind what you want. I want perfect health. I don't do illness, I do wellness. Everything I do is perfect. You know, I was at a conference recently, and someone around, oh my God, I'm so glad I listened to your audio, because you know I have four hours of sleep, and I tell my mind I'm having eight, and I thought, God, I should do that. I'm teaching people this. I forgot, I can do that too. Tell my mind I've had eight hours of sleep. Tell my mind I feel amazing. Tell my mind when I'm working out, my body loves this. My muscles love this. I can do a bit more, rather than go, oh, it all aches, and I hate doing this, and I could be at home watching TV. So just to be very clear, your mind's job is to do what you tell it, and your job, should you choose to accept, is to tell it great things, amazing things. I'm not aging, I'm saging. I'm, and I'm embodying wellness. I have perfect balance. You can choose. Not only does the mind tell the body what to do, it also interrupts the signals coming back from the body. I've got this crippling, thumping headache. can become, well, I've got a little niggle in my head, but I'm really too busy to notice it. I'm in agony. No, you've just had a little shot. That's not agony. This commute is hell. No, hell is not having a car or any gas and looking at people or taking three buses to do your commute. Being in this store is torture. No. When you go to Africa and you see they don't have any stores and the ones they do have no food and you'll never again stand in Ralph's and go, this is a nightmare. It's hell grocery shopping. If you have money in your wallet to buy food for people that love you, that is so far beyond hell. But people use these words. It's killing me. It's a disaster. It's a nightmare. I was on a plane recently and this girl went to the bathroom and she screamed so loudly at the student, what happened? She went, oh my God, it's a disaster. What? She said, my movie didn't pause when I went to the bathroom, and I don't know how to catch it up. It's like, wow, people use that word on a plane. They shout out, this is a disaster. But, you know, we don't even know we do that, and it's a very good idea to speak to your friends and go, hey, what are the words I use? I worked with this very famous model who her favorite word was terrifying. Men talk to me, terrifying. I've got off with this great L'Oreal advert, terrifying. Um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go to act now, terrifying. I'm like, darling, it's not terrifying. It's your fantasy dream come true. What would you have given 20 years ago for this, Terry? Your baby keeps you up all night? Swap places with someone who's selling their house for IVF and stop saying this is terrifying, this is a nightmare, this is a disaster because you are telling your body to react as if it is indeed a nightmare, a disaster. Your words shape your reality. Use better words, and guess what you'll have? A better reality. It really is as simple as that. You know, I, I've had a lot of challenges in my life, all kinds of stuff. I was told I could never have a baby. It was impossible, and I just thought, I'm not letting that in. I've twice had um, very interesting illnesses, and I thought, you know what, I'm not doing this. I'm doing wellness. And I say to my body, you are a wellness creating machine. Your job is to do wellness, only wellness, nothing but wellness. And my body understands, because I tell it very clearly, not, oh, it's okay, it's not bad, it's okay. I, you are a wellness producing machine 24 hours a day. And when I'm tired, I just say, well, my body's like a battery, it needs some recharge. I never come exhausted, I'm shattered. I'm dying of tiredness. I'm dying of starvation. Anyone in this room ever been dying of starvation? I don't think so. Anyone actually ever eaten a horse? I could eat a horse. Who could ever do that? Even that much of a horse. This is killing me. This stress is driving me insane. My kid is making me go mad. Anyone ever said that? Anyone ever noticed they actually have gone mad? Of course not. I do something called PPP. If it's not permanent, and it's not personal, and it's not all-pervasive, it's not coming together. Your kid hates you. Well, when they're 15, they hate everyone. That's not personal. It's what they do. Your boss is difficult. That's not all-pervasive. He's not in your life when you're having sex with your partner or having a long bath or having a nice dinner. 
So if it's not permanent, it can't get you. If it's not personal, meaning it's not just about you, it can't get you. And if it's not all pervasive, it doesn't go on all the time, it can't get you. So we're going to do a lot of healing today. And I'm going to just tell you one more thing about the mind listening. When you prefix any illness with my, I've got my migraine, I've got my indigestion, I've got my irritable stomach, I've got my tension headache. When you call something mine, that's an ownership word. And the mind does not want to give up anything you prefix with my. My fat legs. If only I didn't have these fat legs and my, my big butt, my greed, my hunger. I need my McDonald's. i got to have my latte with my muffin. You know, when we call something mine, it's like, well, this is my child and here's my lovely husband and this is my gift to you. We're very proud of it. We own it. When you call it the, people say, here's the wife. Nobody likes that. Here's the husband. We don't like that. The means you don't own it. So just a little heads up. If you have anything you want to fix, physical, mental, emotional, my temper, never prefix something you want to be free with my. Call it the, and the mind understands, oh, you're not invested in this. Therefore, it can go away. So I'd love to talk to you for hours, but we've got some very, very important healing to do. So what we're going to do is something called the healing vortex. And the vortex, I want you to imagine it rather like a big spinning top, rather like a tornado of energy. You're going to see it just above your head, and it's wider at its widest part than your shoulders, and it's going to come down this. Some people think it comes at them this way, but it's rather like those slinky. You know the slinky? It's going to move through you this way. And if you can imagine the rotating brushes of a car wash, their job is to dislodge, dislodge crud, to find old impacted stuff and to get it out. So the vortex is going to go through you, dislodging stuff, toxic stuff, but also toxic thoughts. And because a lot of us, it's our thoughts that make us ill. So you can do this physically, mentally, emotionally. When I do this in my own training, my staff run around and everyone in the audience has a piece of paper and they write down what they want to be healed from and we stick it on a big board. But that's with 70 people. It would just take too long today. So while I'm doing this, if you have something like I have a female hormone imbalance or erectile dysfunction, which of course isn't for everyone, we're not really going to talk about that because it doesn't affect the whole audience, but that doesn't mean you can't stop and think, yeah, I'm going to work on premature ejaculation or hemorrhaging or, or painful periods. You can do whatever you like. So I'll, I'll stop this from time to time and allow you to think your own thoughts put in your own beliefs, but it's immensely powerful. Even if we don't touch your particular issue, it will work. We're going to start at the head, go right down to the feet. So are you all ready? Oh, and we're going to do this in hypnosis because hypnosis is such a powerful way of getting the mind to really speak to the body. And the body listens. When you go into the subconscious mind, the conscious just goes away. And it allows the subconscious to take over. I think of the subconscious as like a Ferrari. And the conscious is like the driver of a Ferrari that really hasn't had enough Ferrari driving lessons to have a clue what to do with it. Your mind is like a Ferrari. And if you have Ferrari driving lessons, you can get that Ferrari to do amazing stuff. Or it's like a wild horse. But if you've never ridden a wild horse, it's not going to go, oh, I'll do what you want. It's not. But you can run your mind. So we all ready. The fastest way to go into hypnosis, for those of you who haven't done it before, I would like to do it when you get on a plane or a train, or I would like to do it to sleep better, is to roll up your eyes as if you're looking up here. And the trick, and it is a trick, it's also a science, is to keep your eyeballs up, but to close your eyelids down. So let's all do it together. Do not roll your head back. Keep your chin exactly where it is. And look up as if you're trying to look into your eyebrows. Just look up, only use your eyeballs. Keep your eyeballs exactly like that. And keeping the eyeballs up, close the eyelids down. And if you can do that, you can't stop yourself going into this amazing, powerful, deep hypnosis. So let's all do it. Keeping your chin where it is, just look up. As high as you can, roll up your eyes as if you're trying to look into your forehead. 
Keep your eyes glued to a real or imagined spot overhead. Breathe in. Breathe out. Keeping your eyeballs up. Every time you blink, you are going into hypnosis. The more you blink, the deeper and faster you are going into hypnosis roll. Breathe in again. Keep your eyeballs up. Breathe out. And just one more time. Breathe in. This time, hold it. Keep the eyeballs up. Even if it's a little strained, keep them up. And this time, as you exhale, keep your eyeballs up. Close your eyelids right down, all the way down. As your eyelids shut down, forget all about the position of your eyes. And just drop your chin. Just drop your chin so you really feel that looking down sensation. Just drop your chin down. And I want you to get that same looking down feeling that you might get as you look over a balcony or down a flight of stairs. And as I count backwards, you're going to see your feet, feel your feet, and hear your feet taking each step. Some people are very visual. They can see the steps and their feet and the footwear they have on today taking each step. Other people can feel it. Other people can hear it. It's not important. Your mind is designed to respond to two things, the pictures in your head and the words you hear. And the words I'm saying are causing you to make these pictures. You are right now moving on to step 10. As each muscle, every nerve turns loose, lets loose, and you go deeper. You're taking step nine, and you can feel your feet connecting to each step as you go deeper, deeper, deeper into a profound, powerful healing level of hypnosis. You are taking step eight. You can see your feet touching that eighth step as you go deeper, deeper, deeper. You're taking step seven. You can see your feet, hear your feet, even feel your feet connecting to each step as you move down, drift down, travel down to a powerful, healing, transformational level of deep, wonderful, empowering hypnosis. So just let yourself go deeper. You are taking step six. As each muscle, every nerve turns loose, lets loose, and you go deeper. You're taking step five, going even deeper still, halfway into this powerful transformational healing vortex you are taking step four as every sound and noise and movement around you carries you deeper and further into powerful profound transformational healing hypnosis you are taking step three going deeper with every heartbeat you are taking step two as you gently calmly easily move on over to an even deeper level. You are taking step one. Go deeper, deeper, deeper. Your mind knows exactly what go deeper means. It means go deeper into an awareness of yourself. Go deeper into your own internal state. Every time I click my fingers and say these words, go deeper, drift deeper, sink deeper. Your brilliant genius mind is taking you deeper. Go deeper, go deeper, drift deeper, sink deeper, go deeper, 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 even deeper still. But please be aware that depth of trance is not linked to results. You can be in the lightest state of hypnosis and get the most profound healing. You can be in a deep catatonic state and get the most profound healing. It's not about how deep you are, but it's good to believe we're going deeper. So one more time, go deeper, 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 deeper into a powerful state of self-healing where you begin to understand that your body responds to the words you tell it and the pictures you make in your head from this day on. 
Those words are yours to change. Those pictures are yours to change. The way you feel about anything is because of the pictures you make in your head and the words you say. People say, but I'm not visual. Yes, you are. You could never worry a day in your life if you weren't visual. So now's the time to visualize. And I want you to simply visualize a tingling sensation in your fingertips. Just think about a tingling sensation moving throughout your 10 fingers. You can feel that tingling all across the tips of your fingers. And as you focus on that tingling, it's increasing all by itself. And you can notice that happening. Move that tingling all across your palms. Focus on that tingling sensation in your palms and notice it increases all by itself. And you can simply observe that happening. The more you think about the tingling in your fingers and palms, the more you can notice it. Now move it down to your toes. Focus on a tingling sensation in the tips of your toes as you focus on that tingling. It's increasing all by itself. And you can notice that tingling moving into the ball of your foot, moving into the arch of your foot. And now move it back to your hands. And now move it back to your feet and have the tingling going on in your hands and your feet. You're learning to move energy around your body. It's as simple as thinking about it. Where a thought goes, energy goes, and healing goes. When you think a thought, you create a physical reaction and an emotional response. And whenever you wish to, a healing response too. So now is the time to begin. You've already seen that you think a thought, it creates a reaction. And you can move that energy just by thinking about it, just by telling your mind, make my hands tingle, now make my feet tingle, now make them both tingle. I want you to imagine just above your head is the most beautiful, powerful vortex of energy. It's moving in a clockwise direction from left to right. This energy is rather like a spinning top. It's a spinning top of energy. It's rather like a tornado. I want you to pick a color, a beautiful healing color, pink, white, silver, gold, blue, the color that works for you. And I want you to notice this vortex is about to move through your body, keeping your body completely within its sphere. And all of your vibrations are going to vibrate at exactly the same frequency as this powerful healing energy vortex. Just like a tornado, just like a spinning top, it has a tail. And that's the first part that's going to move into your body. Then it has a middle section that's wider than your hips and shoulders, then it has a top. And the midsection's about to move into your mind and really work on outdated beliefs. But remember, because this is moving through your body, you have three times, three times to work on your eyes, your gut, your stomach, your heart, your beliefs, your hair, your metabolic rate, your immune system, whatever you want. So right now, the top of this powerful, beautiful, vibrating, healing energy vortex, which is spinning, turning, twisting, tipping, is touching the top of your head as it moves into your body. It's moving into your head, and rather like a laser, it is geared to go straight into your mindset and find negative thoughts. And as this vortex finds negative thoughts, negative beliefs, negative imprints, negative impressions you picked up years ago that have been stuck in there, just like the rotating brushes of a car wash, it will dislodge them and move them and shove them out of your body, out of your mind, out of your life, like a big broom. That's where it's going. So right now you can feel this spinning energy this pulsating energy, this turning energy, as this vortex moves completely into your mind. And like a laser, it locates negative thoughts, limiting beliefs, destructive thoughts. I'm not enough. I'm not good enough. 
I can't do what other people do. I'm not lovable enough. I'm different. This vortex is finding those thoughts and moving them, shoving them, pushing them, moving them out of your mind. It is looking at every syntax, every neuron, and it is dislodging, limiting beliefs, limiting thoughts, anything that could have hurt you, held you back or limited you, anything that could have limited you from learning, from recognizing how lovable you are, from knowing that you can live in perfect health and wellness, anything that would stop that, delay that, limit that is already being shoved out of your mind, shoved in front of this vortex, ready to be pushed out of your body. But as this vortex is staying in your mind, it can also install some pretty powerful stuff. It can install in you powers of phenomenal recall, incredible confidence, powers of concentration, comprehension, retention, recall, assimilation. Everything you have ever read or experienced in your entire life is in your mind, stored there for your memory. And if you want a phenomenal memory, say to your mind, go ahead and remind me. Your mind is like Google. It is always switched on. It's never on pause. It records everything. And you say to your mind, remind me where my passport is. Take me to my keys. Remind me. And it will do whatever you say. So right now, this vortex is working on coding, installing, imprinting into you a phenomenal memory, incredible, impressive powers of retention, recall, comprehension, concentration, assimilation. Your conscious mind is expanding. Anything you focus on, you remember, and you tell yourself, every day I have a phenomenal memory, an incredible memory. I have great focus. When I focus, my conscious mind expands. I take in more and more information. I have phenomenal powers of attention, recall, focus. Say that every day, and it can only, only, only come true. But now this vortex is moving down to your eyes. It's slowing right down, and it's working on your eyes, working on your vision so you can see perfectly. It's working on your vision. You're able to see the absolute beauty of you. You're seeing yourself the way your children see you, the way people who love you see you, the way your pets, your friends see you. You're seeing that you are beautiful, you matter, you are deeply significant. You are here for a reason, and you have something phenomenal to offer the world. So allow this vortex to slow right down and work on your eyes. If you have one eye better than the other eye, you can actually do this in your head silently. You can command one eye to use the other better eye as an imprint, as a memory. You can command your mind to go back to its original coding and to give you perfect vision wonderful vision, outstanding vision. You can see clearly. And in seeing clearly, you see the beauty of you, the wonder of you. Maybe you can even hear that Elvis Presley song playing. It's the wonder, the wonder of you. And you can play that song in your head every time you do the vortex and see the wonder of you. Because when you see the wonder of you, you give the whole world permission to see the wonder of you. So right now, hear that song. See through your own eyes the wonder of you. But also understand that you have immense power to have perfect vision, to have your eyes work perfectly, to have your eyes go back to their original coding and to function perfectly, properly, correctly, exactly as nature intended them to and indeed wants them to. And now the vortex is moving on from your eyes. It's traveling down to your nose, traveling down to your ears, and it's slowing right down because now you're beginning to hear every compliment you've ever had. And if there weren't enough, give yourself some right now. I matter. 
I am deeply significant. I am more than enough. I'm here for a reason. The universe wanted me to be here. It wanted me to be me. And there is something I can do better than anyone else. I'm here for a reason. Imagine hearing those words every day. I matter. I'm significant. I'm enough. I have a purpose. And I live that purpose. Imagine if you could hear that every day. Because you can. Because as this vortex in its vastness works on your ears, but also moves down to your mouth and your throat, you have a voice and your voice now commits to saying these words every day. I matter. I am significant. I am enough. I am deeply lovable. I easily give and receive love. And imagine having your children say those words every day around the breakfast table. I matter. I'm significant. I'm enough. I'm lovable just the way I am. And I'm here for a purpose with something unique to offer the world. Because that is the truth about you. So I want you to imagine saying it. Say it now in your head. And now let's all say it out loud with power, with unshakable conviction, with absolute certainty. Repeat after me. I matter. I'm deeply significant. I am so enough. I couldn't be more enough. I'm here for a reason. I'm here for a purpose. And now I recognize my own enoughness and my own significance. I give the whole world permission to also recognize my enoughness and my significance. 